ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So we gotta talk about this whole Ebony K. Williams situation, y'all. So this is what is going on currently. Y'all know Auntie Ebony hoodie. She's back going viral. She's giving all the young girls advice. Um, she's saying that basically, you know, you need to like get married early, have children young. And so you have a segment of the population of females who are really mad. They feel like she's giving Kevin Samuels vibes. Then you got other people who are like, you know what? She's making a lot of sense. So we're gonna listen to what Ebony K. Williams had to say. She also went on to the Breakfast Club this morning and she was talking to this young lady. I forget the young lady's name. Forgive me. Um, you guys will hear it in this video. And they were kind of going back and forth about this situation. Um, and Ebony was making some decent points as well. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this. It's about five minutes long. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a second here to pull this up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, hold up. Let me pull this up. Okay, here she goes. The reality that needs to be said out loud is that as black men age, their desirability increases. Thus, their optionality of women is always expanding. And the exact opposite is true for black women. Mm -hmm. As we age, doesn't matter how much money we accumulate, our degrees or professional accolades, the reality is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year. No matter how good we look, no matter how fit we are, men are still seeing primarily our presumed dwindling fertility as a knock against us. And speaking of fertility, that is another reason that I want younger black women to seek marriage and partnership in college or right after if that's what they choose. Because the number of college-educated black men is so low when compared to black college-educated women that we're all going to be targeting the same small pool of men. And as we heard today, on most campuses, there's like seven black women students for every one black man student. Y'all do the math. So here's my advice. If you are a young black woman in college and you know in your heart and in your head that you want to prioritize family, I suggest that you simultaneously pursue that MRS degree right along with that BA or JD. Because a handful of black college age men that actually do desire to get married soon and they do share that value system and family is a priority for them too. Y'all, that is an incredibly small pool and it's shrinking as you get older. And by the time you reach my age, 40, you will be faced with different choices relating to life partnership and motherhood. Now, I'm not saying that delaying marriage or motherhood is a bad option, but it's one that comes with its own consequences. And our women deserve to know on the front end of their decision making instead of on the back half. This is a conversation for ladies. And I texted uh, my good friend Charlemagne. I said, as a friend to the show, I, I heard the conversation yesterday. I appreciated the critique and the constructive nature of it. And I said, you know, since I'm down the street on the train, let me pull up. And, and I want to hear from you, Lauren, about what you agree with and what you disagree with and have a, a ladies conversation about let's it. do it so the disagreeing for me came with the starting with the infertility and the uh the market value they're appreciating so with the infertility i know some i said this yesterday so some stuff is science right you can't get around that mm -hmm. but i feel like when you start with that and you lead with that it then makes people get defensive and they don't even hear the rest of it i know when i first listened to it I was like, oh God, this is gonna be another one of those conversations where like someone's telling me as a woman, by the time you get this age, your life is over. And mm -hmm. you know, when you're trying to figure things out and you're like, I'm 31 years old, right? Like I'm recently out of a very long relationship. You know, as a woman, as a black woman, right? Especially working in, I might not get that that other chance. Like I gotta do it right the first time. And I think- You're talking about professionally? I, pro professionally and personally. Okay. But I just feel like when you lead with the stuff that you lead with, it instantly turns the conversation negative. And for someone like me who is watching and learning and listening to you, mm -hmm. 
it makes it where now I am defensive. I don't want to watch, listen, and learn. I don't hear the rest of what you're saying. So now I'm not being taught. And I should feel like I can listen to you and learn from you and not feel like you're the op. So I want to just go back actually to your first point, Lauren, which I think you are conceding that you had a reaction to my commentary that was so visceral in nature that you actually shut down your listening comprehension skills. Mm. Yeah. You said that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so because of that, though, right, I'm not going to sit in a posture of ownership because you made a choice to be limited in the way in which you received and processed the information. Now, you are a grown woman, and you have autonomy over what you choose to consume for Where, you. For, it, for you're you, You're talking Lauren. to me specifically. Yeah, right I now. thought you agreed with Ebony, though. I, my whole point of what I'm saying, right, because right now I feel like you're taking what I didn't agree with and the fact that I don't remember specific words or whatever no, you I'm said. No, I'm not, Lauren, really. I really think this would be better served and more productive if just like I, it's kind of like an opening statement in, in a court of law. I gave you a good amount of time to lay out two prongs of disagreement. And I respect and appreciate both of your positions. I'm not saying they are wrong, but I am Go saying ahead. I don't know how productive it is to be the time, manner, and delivery police. So for everybody, Lauren, that takes your position, which is very valid, it was visceral to me, I found it triggering, it felt hurtful, it, I felt attacked, I felt policed, I felt shitted on, whatever it is, there's also a whole nother contingency of black women that felt seen by that commentary, that felt heard. And my peers who are 40 and up are like, I wish someone would have told me. And the fact that you are for you, for you, for you're you talking Lauren. to me specifically. Yeah, right I now. thought you agreed with Ebony though. I, my whole point of what I'm saying, right? Cause right now I feel like you're taking what I didn't agree with and the fact that I don't remember specific words or whatever no, you I'm said. No, I'm not, Lauren, really. I really think this would be better served and more productive. If just like I, it's kind of like an opening statement in a court of law, I gave you a good amount of time to lay out two prongs of disagreement. And I Okay, all right, I'm back, child. <laughs> they gonna be arguing, going back and forth all day, every day. Um, I'm going to say this. I do, I get where Ebony is coming from. And this is the same thing I was saying when we did that call-in show. Remember when I, you know, we had guys and girls calling in and y'all were dragging the men. Like y'all were going off, calling them dusties. The chat was insane that night. But I was saying that, you know, Ebony is in a, is in a different space. And people keep forgetting that because, you know, Ebony looks young for her age. She looks good for her age. You know what I'm saying? She's a beautiful woman. But, you know, she is now 40. So her life experience and where she's at is different. She's a 40-year-old woman who right now has no man. She doesn't have any children, but she desires children. She desires, you know, a husband. And I think she's, like, going to purposely make herself a single mother or something. Like, she done froze her eggs, and she's about to go on some journey to, you know, I don't know, sperm bank or something like that. So she's in a different space. So I think with her, she's trying to warn younger girls. Like, she's basically saying, like, you know, in your 20s, you know, as soon as you finish college, you want to start pursuing a man while you're young because you got to, we just got to be honest. That's just what it is. Um, most guys, especially older guys are looking for more younger girls. And so that's the thing. Like you have to, you know, be on that already. You don't want to sit and make everything about your career in your twenties and thirties. I believe that's what she's saying, right? In your 20s and 30s and then you turn around and now you're like 35 close to 40 and now you're looking to get married and have a child but all the guys in your age bracket or you know who are on your same level you know social economically right who have money who climbed the corporate ladder they're not checking for that it's just what it is you know i don't i don't think she said anything false but i also had to be real too that i just feel like as women sometimes we can't ever win you know what I'm saying? It's like, think about it like this. Like for me, I remember for a long time, you know, I would allow people to shame me because I was a young mom, you know, when I had my son. And so, you know, I had my child very young. I got married young and everything else to my kids' father. And so people almost like looked at that like I was beneath them because I was a teen mom and things like that. So it's like if we have kids early and we get married early then we're doing too much or you're a teen mom and people are wagging their finger at you but honestly i'm happy i had my kids young you know what i'm saying like my kids are like my best friend i'm still their mom don't get it twisted but you know like 
now me and my son are at age where we just have grown conversations about everything, politics, rap, you know, all that stuff. And they keep me hip, okay? They keep me, like, in the know. So... I, I wouldn't change that for the world. I couldn't imagine being 40 now having to like freeze eggs and go to a sperm bank and, you know, roll the dice. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever. That's, you know, her journey. But so I, I just feel like as women, we can't win. If we start young, then it's, you know, we're shamed by society. Then if you wait later in life because you want to climb the corporate ladder, because I have family members who, you know, they climbed the corporate ladder, but now they're 40, 42 years old, and they're trying to find a man, and those men who are on their level, they're not there. They're looking for younger women, unfortunately. So the problem is that's not fair to women who, like, work their way up the corporate ladder. They're always expected to date down. So, yeah, they can get a man, but the man is usually not on their level. So it's usually always, like, some, you know, dusty. Let's keep it real. Y'all's favorite rapper. Kenneth Petty is nowhere near Nicki Minaj's level. Like, can we just have a real conversation about their dynamic? Nicki could have any guy. At one point in time, she was dating Nas. We can go on. Mary J. Blige. Her and Ken don't. Wendy Williams. Kevin Hunter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when a woman is doing good... And they're making money and they're climbing the corporate ladder and they're building, you know, themselves up. It's like you get to the top and it's you're looking around. And a lot of times those men that are on your same level, you know, what I'm saying economically, you know, what I'm saying men mentally, even age wise, they're not there. So that's the part that I just think that um, is unfair. But she's not lying. And yes, a woman's value. We just got to keep it real, you know for men is younger like a guy is going to look for a woman if, if, a, if let's say if a guy is like 40 45 a lot of times they're going to look for women who are like 35 and under you know what i'm saying especially if they don't have any children and things like that and they want to have kids because they know if they go with an older woman it might be harder to conceive and you know just things that happen biologically right so i think there's a lot of nuances in this conversation um, I don't think it's good or bad. I just feel like everybody's journey is their journey, you know, and I think that we have to give each other grace as women and as men, because I think men go through that too, where even, you know, men who are well to do and who have money, a lot of times they're only left to pick from, you know, like a, a vapid class of women, you know, the gold diggers and women who are just using them and things like that. So I just think that everybody's just trying to figure out their way through life, you know, but I don't think either way is bad. I don't think that you necessarily should be waiting until you're 40 to try and, you know, get pregnant and get married because you have to keep it in, in the back of your mind. Your biological clock is ticking. You're getting older. Nothing wrong with getting older because men get older too. But if you can do things, you know, in your 30s, late 20s, 30s, mid 30s, It'll be a lot. It'll be a lot less of a headache than in your fifties. Like that's why Ayana Van Zandt is screaming, like, "Oh, y'all date a bus driver? Of course you will. You're like sixty-five. Of course. At this point, you just want somebody with a pulse. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know. So yeah, of course. But if Ebony is a lawyer. She, she doesn't need to date a bus driver. Why should she have to date a bus driver? So that's the part. It's just like sometimes as women, you know, you, you just can't win. So I just say that you have to, like, live your life for you. You know what I'm saying? Do what you feel is right. And if you want to get married young and you want to have children in your 20s or whatever, you know, do that. If that's what, you know, you want to have for your life. Because at the end of the day, you only have one life. And you have to live it to how you see it. You can't live your life for other people. And, you know, and like I told y'all before, too, I just also don't like when we talk about biological stuff. People are always like, oh, you know, you know, a, a woman, if she gets older, her eggs are fried. Or, you know, uh, if she gets older, the child can have Down syndrome. And there's all this stuff. And I'm like, well, what about all these dudes who are out here shooting dust? Like, like, just because you can get somebody pregnant at 80 doesn't mean you should. Al Pacino's out here having babies. 
How many people have had kids with older men and them babies weren't right? Because that damn sperm done expired. So can we have a real conversation? Okay. So a lot of people act like, you know, biological stuff happens on both ends. And sometimes the issues come from the guys as well. You know, but everybody also, yeah, you know, <laughs> not dusty nuts. Y'all so stupid. <laughs> Y'all are rolling in the chat, but I'm just saying, you know, I hear just blowing out dust and shit. Like, okay, yes, you can get somebody pregnant, but is the baby going to be vivacious? I don't want to get pregnant by an 80-year-old. No, I want somebody who's, you know, like I told y'all a few streams ago, I want those swimmers swimming. I don't want them blind and shit with a cane trying to find the egg. I want them swimming and shit. So, yeah, just because you older, men, does not mean that it's, you know what I'm saying, that you guys are just void of, like, having issues. You know, so biologics affects everybody. Just biological things affect everyone, male or female. So that's the only thing I hate about that when we talk about, like, you know, the whole pregnancy thing and having kids. It's always, like, on the woman. It's like, oh, you know, she's getting older. Well, yeah, and, and so are you, sir. <laughs> okay, unk. You know, so I just always find that really, really funny that, you know, we need to have a real conversation that fertility issues can be an issue on both ends, you know. So if you want to have kids, it's a lot better to have them earlier, okay, than later on in life. I mean, you can have them later on in life, but it's just more complications. And again, like I told you guys, you know, that's why a lot of people, like back in the day, that's why a lot of older men dated really, really young girls. Because back then, you know, people didn't live as long. You know, so you were lucky if you made it to 50. But now with modern medicine and, you know, vitamins and Viagra, you know, guys are living longer and fucking longer. So it's like, you know, people are able to just do what they want to do now that they couldn't do years ago. So you got to start really thinking in terms of that. Back in the day, you couldn't freeze your eggs. What frozen eggs? Either you got pregnant or you didn't. So now there's like all these little things that people can do to try, to try and pause time. But you still got to be realistic, though. Even if you freeze your eggs, you don't want to be 50 inserting frozen eggs into you because biologically your body, like you're, you're not necessarily the same person at 50 that you are at 25 or 30. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind. So, again, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with what either person was saying, Ebony or the other young girl. Um, I think they were both talking from their perspectives. But I think Ebony does sometimes come off a little bit jaded a bit because I think for her, she chose her career. She went up the, you know, she chose to be a lawyer, went up the corporate ladder. You know, she's very educated, very smart, and she's beautiful, right? She's fun, fit, and friendly. Ain't that what y'all be, the, the three Fs and shit? Um, you know, she's fun, fit, and friendly, and she can't seem to get a man, you know? So now she's having to go to a sperm bank. And I don't think she ever saw that for herself because she's a really pretty girl, woman, you know what I mean? So I think that kind of jades her a little bit. I don't know. That's just, I just kind of get that vibe. I am a, a malevolent elephant. I'm not straddling the fence. I am telling them the truth. I'm saying you need to try and have children get into relationships when you are younger. You do not want to push it off. So I don't disagree with what Ebony's saying, but I also feel like, you know, a lot of times women get the short end of the stick. Like we're always chastised no matter what we do. If we have kids too early in life, then we're dumb teenage moms. If we wait till, you know, later on in life, oh, you're old as hell to be trying to have kids. So it's like, damn, it's like we get it. On either end of the spectrum, you know what I'm saying? So you have to live your life at the end of the day. But I would agree with her that you should pursue things when you are younger. You know what I'm saying? Get into relationships when you're younger. Get into, you know, marriage when you're younger as opposed to older. You want to get with somebody you can build with and grow with. You want to get with somebody in your 20s and then y'all can look back in your 30s and 40s and see what y'all built together. I think that is very, very special. But, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't happen for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I thought that would happen with me and my ex-husband. It didn't. We got divorced. You know, we're cool, but we're not together. So it's just like things happen. But I don't disagree with what Ebony's saying, you know, but I also feel like as women, we just, you know, we just get bashed no matter what we do.
you know, so I'm just saying. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.